Hello, I'm Timothy Jones of Chesterton Academy in Hopkins, Minnesota, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how I teach uh, calligraphy, basic calligraphy, to ninth graders. This is a Gothic calligraphy, uh, very simple, mostly straight lines, so uh, it's something that is suitable for ninth graders, and I hope this is helpful for you. These are the basic materials that I use for my calligraphy class, and I'll go through these uh, just very quickly for you. This is a speedball pen holder, which will accommodate uh, different types of pen nibs, and it's a good all-around pen holder for pen and ink and calligraphy. These are the calligraphy tips I'm using. This is a C2 speedball. These come in a twin pack. These come in left and right-handed, but I really recommend if you can find them, the universal point, and then you won't have to keep track of who's left-handed and who's right-handed. Uh, and those go in that pen holder in the end. This is some walnut ink. This is uh, Tom Norton's walnut ink. That All of this is coming from uh, Dick Blick because it's very easy to order there. And we actually have a store here too. So you can use uh, India ink or walnut ink or anything that works for you there. Um, I like the walnut ink because it's sort of traditional. This is the inkwell that I'm using at each table. Usually uh, two, three, four students can share an inkwell, and I recommend you tape this down to the table. But it's basically just a little plastic paint pot, and if it's taped down to the table, you won't have problems with it being knocked over, which sometimes happens. Now before class, one of the things that I do is put these sheets of paper up. This is just ordinary newsprint that I've taped up onto my board, 18 by 24 newsprint. And then I have ruled that with a Sharpie based on the spacing over here on the left. So each line is about four pen widths wide. Now my pen isn't a pen actually, but a flat brush that I'm using and because it's a nice new flat brush, a number six, uh, it's going to give me a mark a lot like a calligraphy pen. So the profile will be really similar. And uh, this way, it makes a big enough mark that everyone can see what I'm doing in the class. And this will help them to uh, get the right marks on their paper. Now, one thing we want to get clear really from the very beginning is the proper position of the pen because that's going to be critical for all of this letter formation. And that's something that they'll need to practice but always keep in mind and it's a kind of a 45 degree rule uh, times two. So there are two different kinds of 45 degrees. One of them is the angle at which you're holding the pen uh, compared to the paper. So just like uh, you would normally when writing, a 45 degree angle is a nice comfortable angle. It's not too steep which will make it very hard to get smooth letters and not too shallow. If it's too shallow, the ink isn't going to flow properly and again, you'll have problems forming the letters. So 45 degrees, nice comfortable angle uh, between the pen and the paper. <clears throat> the other 45 degree is the angle of the end of the pen compared to the lines on the paper, so the line of your text. So when you hold this end of the pen to the line on the paper, you want that to sit at a 45 degree angle as well. And you want to maintain that uh, the whole time because that is how the shapes of these letters are formed. If it's held too flat or too uh, vertical, it will affect the way the letters look and they won't come out right. So you want to maintain not only a 45 degree away from your paper this way, but 45 degrees this way to the line of your text. So I'm going to put my ink pot up here. And this is indicated on the sheets that I hand out that they need to maintain this angle of the pen like that so they can make a really thin 45 degree mark this way. I hope you can see that well on the video.
So I'm going to start out just based on our very first sheet with the basic marks, and I'm going to run through this much faster than I normally would in front of a class because you can stop it um, as often as you like. Uh, in the class, I will stop often to let the students uh, do their work, do their exercises, and so that I can walk around and observe, uh, make suggestions, uh, and that sort of thing, especially early on. So it does take a great deal longer than this video is going to be, but um, I'm running through it much faster than I would in a classroom. So you need to stop and pause between each uh, set of numbers. I usually do maybe two or three uh, letters at a time, excuse me, not numbers, and uh, then let them practice those. So the first thing I'm going to do are a couple of basic marks uh, based on the fundamental marks for this alphabet. So I'm going to dip my brush here. The first mark I'm going to do is called the short diamond. Basically, if you put your brush in the proper position at 45 degrees and you bring it down at 45 degrees, it will give you, or it should give you, something a, a lot like a perfect diamond shape. And that's a really critical mark because it's used in many of these letters. So what the students should do on that first top row is a whole row of these short diamonds and practice those. The next mark is the long diamond, and that's very important too. So what's happening with the long diamond, you're coming back up with that 45 degree angle, but instead of pulling the brush down at 45 degrees, you pull it out at a shallower 30 degrees or so, so that that diamond is just a bit longer. And this takes practice, and this is why I have examples printed on the sheets that I hand out. But the long diamond is also really critical for forming a lot of these lowercase letters so that there is enough space between the parts of the letter. So the short diamond and the long diamond are very important to practice early on. The next part of the letter that we start out with <coughs> is the short vertical. And usually I do a whole line of each of these, but I'm just going to do a few to demonstrate. And you can see based on the paper, uh, the exercise paper uh, that I will have available that uh, I'm doing a whole line of each so they get some good practice. So the short vertical starts with the top of the pen, still always 45 degrees, just touching the upper line and then pulling that straight down until the bottom of the pen touches the bottom line. So what you have there is a nice vertical line that is going to have a 45 degree angle at the top and the bottom. And it's good for them to practice that until they get the sense of starting and stopping at that top and bottom line. And these should look sort of like uh, fence posts, you know, uh, or pickets in a, in a white picket fence. And this is a really fundamental mark for many of these lowercase letters. So those are the short verticals. Once the students have the hang of these short verticals, then you want to practice combining the short vertical with the short horizontal mark. And those look like this. So we're still using these lines that I've ruled out on here. These lines are four pen widths between each line, and that gives you just the ideal uh, spacing for forming your letters. So the next exercise was to do a whole line of the short vertical combined with a short horizontal through the middle of that. And this is good practice for discovering whether you are holding the pen at the proper angle. If you have that proper 45 degree angle on your pen, then you should have the same width to your mark on the vertical and on the horizontal. They should be the same width. If you're holding it the wrong angle, one of those marks is going to be thicker than the other. If it's too shallow this way, 
you'll get that. So this is a good way to see whether they're holding their pen at that good steady 45 degree angle. So we just do a whole line of these with a short vertical combined with the short horizontal. The next one is used in a few of the lowercase letters and in some of the uppercase letters, and that is the long vertical. So the long vertical, rather than starting at the top line, is a couple of pen widths over the top of the line. So you have to sort of estimate that, but it's a couple of pen widths up over the line and then comes straight down again. Of course, that's something you'll have to get accustomed to is just how tall those verticals should be. But the tall or the long vertical should be a couple of pen widths above the line and then stopping at the bottom line just like the short vertical. Now the next exercise is combining the short diamond and the short vertical into a sort of unit here. So we start with that short diamond, come straight down, and then back up about halfway and then do another short diamond. And this is the basis for a lot of lowercase letters that are built around that. So I have them practice a whole line of just the short diamond, come straight down, pick up the pen, come back about half the width of that and then do another short diamond. Those first two marks, you don't even need to lift your pen, just short diamond, straight down, pick up the pen, move it about half the width of this short diamond stroke, and then another at the bottom. So a whole line of those, and we're building some good foundations for our lowercase letters. Now on this sheet, I have a number of the uh, lowercase letters with room for an entire line to practice each letter. And that's what we want to do is have them practice each of these uh, for an entire line. I'm not going to do that for my demonstration, but this is what we're asking them to do. So. The first letter, and I'll do a couple of these, is the letter O, and this combines all of our marks together. So we're gonna start with our short diamond, and then without even lifting the pen, we're gonna do the long diamond. So it's not too long, but a little bit longer than the short diamond. Another long diamond, and then straight down, and those should just meet. And that's the letter O. So once again, start with a long diamond, straight down. A sh a, excuse me, the short vertical, straight down, long diamond, another long diamond, and then another short vertical to meet right at the bottom, and that is the letter O. The next letter, which is, you know, if they practice the letter O, this next one is gonna come a much uh, easier for them and that's the letter A. So we're going to do basically the same operation. Straight down with the vertical, the long diamond, another long diamond, straight down, only this time we add another short diamond, and that is the letter A. So very easy to build that on top of what they know already from the letter O. And then the next letter, is the letter C, very many of the same marks, just a slight bit different. So we'll start with that short vertical, straight down, the long diamond at the bottom, another long diamond at the top, and that's basically the C, although to dress it up, you can pull your pen now along at that 45 degree and make a thin line which makes that C look a little bit more, look a little closed and a little more, more right on the page. So let's do that again, the letter C with the short vertical, long diamond, long diamond, 
And then if you want, that line at the bottom that makes it look a little more balanced. Now the next letter, because it's so similar to this, should be very easy too. So we're gonna do another short vertical, long diamond, long diamond, and then we'll pull back at, at that 45 and another little 45, and that is your letter E. So one more time, short vertical, long diamond, long diamond, pull the pen back at 45, and another 45, and that's the letter E. So now we're going to go with our next letter, is the letter G, and it's our first letter with a descender, which is a mark that passes down below the lower line. So the letter G is built exactly like the letter O, except for the very end. So we'll start again, and now they're familiar with these marks. So that uh, short vertical, long diamond, long diamond, and then as we head down on this, we continue past the line and then just pull this over for the tail of the G. One more time, short vertical, long diamond, long diamond, straight down, and then we just pull this in a curve for the descender on the G. Now having done the G, it's a good time to go into the letter Q, and you can see again that these are not in alphabetical order, but they do build logically from one kind of letter to the other. So we're really thinking about groups of marks rather than uh, alphabetical order. So the letter Q is a little funny looking, different than we might expect, but it looks very good printed or written. So there's that short vertical, long diamond, long diamond, and then we come straight down again, and then stop, and then do a short diamond here. We can also come back this way with our short 45 degree mark that completes the cue. So one more time, that's a little bit close together, but here's our short vertical, long diamond, long diamond, straight down, stop, pull of a short diamond, and then this mark. So these are, these are the verticals. So, that's the letter Q. V is another really simple letter, so we'll get started with that with a short diamond at the top line. Pull it straight down. Stop, long diamond. It's a little curvy. And then we're gonna repeat that with a short diamond and then straight down to meet that long diamond. So this takes a little practice to get the spacing right between those two short diamonds. So we'll start with a short diamond, straight down, long diamond, then another short diamond, straight down. And if you're holding your pen at the proper 45 degree angle, these should meet up and be a nice 45 degree angle. So that's the letter V. The letter U then is the same letter with just a little short diamond for a tail. So here's short diamond, short vertical, long diamond, short diamond, vertical, and then you just add another short diamond and you have the letter U. So one more time with the letter U, short diamond, short vertical, long diamond, short diamond, short vertical, and then another short diamond. And then the next builds logically right on top of these letters. So that is the letter Y. So we'll do another short diamond, short vertical, a long diamond, short diamond, short vertical, and then we're just gonna come down and pull it over to the left just like we did 
the letter G. And by this time, they should be getting used to making these marks, and these should be coming, I hope, a little bit more easily for them. So let's do that again. Short diamond, a little wobbly there. Short vertical, long diamond, short diamond, and then just pull that down right over. There's the letter Y. So the next two letters will be N, the letter N, and then the letter M. And these are very simple, using all the marks we've been using so far. So we start with the short diamond, short vertical, and then we add our little short diamond at the bottom, then the long diamond, then straight down, and another short diamond. And that's the letter N. So once more on the letter N, we do the short diamond, short vertical, short diamond at the bottom, and remember to move that back just a little bit, the long diamond at the top, and then straight down again, and then the short diamond. Now the letter M is very simple to do after you've got the hang of the N. You do the short diamond, short vertical, I'm a little cramped here, the short diamond at the bottom, another long diamond, short vertical, another short diamond, and then just add to that again, a long diamond, short vertical, and another short diamond. We have the letter M. And if these are uh, kind of spaced properly on the page, they really do have a nice rhythm to them. They should be uh, easy to space out in a way that is uh, readable and looks right and is well balanced. So one more time with the M. Short diamond, short vertical, and then short diamond, long diamond, short vertical, short diamond, long diamond, short vertical, short diamond. And so those should look very nice and evenly spaced as much as you can. And so the long diamond is very important for getting that spacing correct. So we're going to continue with our lowercase letters. Uh, the back end of the alphabet in a number of ways. So uh, we will start by building with the same marks we've been using, now the letter W, which is very, very much like the letter M, although not identical. So we start out with the letter W, short diamond, short vertical, and then the long diamond, another short diamond, a vertical, and those meet, and then another short diamond, there's another long diamond, and then those meet there. So because you have a little space between these short diamonds, it should accommodate the space for the long diamond. So let's try that again. Here's the short diamond, straight down, long diamond, short diamond, straight down, and those should meet at a 45, then another long diamond, short diamond, and then straight down, and those should meet right there so that you have a nice W. Now we're going to do the letter I, which is very simple, but it does involve a little bit of a different step. So the letter I starts with the short diamond, straight down, stop and then pick up your pen just like we've been doing with the short diamond at the bottom and then over the top centered over this part of the letter you're going to have another short diamond and that's the letter a or i excuse me so one more time with the i short diamond short vertical short diamond and another short diamond on top once we've done the I, it's very easy then to transition to the J, so we're going to start with a short diamond, straight down, and then we continue past the line with a descender and pull that over, just like the G 
and the y. And then we continue and then come back with our short diamond again. So there's our letter J. One more time with the letter J, short diamond. Straight down, pull that back, and then dot with the short diamond. Now our next letter is the letter R, very simple again. We'll start with the short diamond, straight down, another short diamond at the bottom, just like the letter I, and we go now with a long diamond, and then again, just for balance, we give that little, little 45 degree line at the end that's very thin, We're just using the edge of the pen as it moves at 45 degrees. So there's the letter R, my long diamond might be a little long there, but there it is. Let's try that again. So short diamond, short vertical, short diamond, then the long diamond, and then the kick up at the end. There's the letter R. So the next letter is the letter S, and it's a little tricky. It has a mark that you need to practice in order to get it correct. So it's built differently than any of the other letters. And it starts this way. You start with a very short vertical right under the line this way. And then the long diamond. And then a longer vertical like this. It's almost like a, a lightning symbol. So let's do that again. The upper part is smaller than the bottom part. So we start with a sh very short vertical, a long diamond, and then another short vertical, but not as short. And once again, short vert, very short vertical, long diamond, and then down to that line. And that's the core of the letter S. Once they practice that and they get good at it, uh, they should be able to build the S with no problem because the rest of it is fairly simple. We have a long diamond at the top and a long diamond at the bottom. Oh, those came off a little bit, but here's the long diamond at the top, long diamond at the bottom, and that's basically the letter S. So next is the letter T. Uh, very simple, we're going to use uh, a little different mark though. This isn't the short vertical, it's a little bit uh, of a variation on the short vertical. So for the letter T, instead of starting underneath the line this way, we're going to move up and just sit right on top of the line. The letter T is not a very tall letter, but it is a little taller than a lot, most of them. So we start just above the line, pull down in that vertical, short diamond, and then we come back and match this 45 degrees with the end of our pen and pull over with a short horizontal. And that's the letter T. So I'll do that again. Start just above the line, straight down. We're adding our short diamond right on the end. We're not pulling back this time. We're tagging it onto the end and then we meet up with this 45 degree and do a horizontal mark like that. So it's not a very long horizontal. It doesn't extend outside the bounds of the letter very much. So once again, the T, short diamond, and then this short horizontal mark. And that's the letter T, the lowercase. We'll run through a few more here, building on the same kinds of marks. So this is the letter L, and this is one of those that starts with this long uh, vertical, rather than the short vertical. So the letter L, we start with a uh, actually a short diamond at the top, pull it down to the lower line, back up, and then do our short diamond so we start again with short diamond, long vertical, short diamond, short diamond, long vertical, short diamond. 
for the letter L. Now the letter L also creates the basis for some other letters. So we'll go on, and our next one will be the letter B. And that starts the same way. Short diamond, straight down, and then we have the long diamond. Come up, add another long diamond, straight down, and those should meet right in the middle. Short diamond, straight down, long diamond, long diamond, and then straight down again, and those should just meet up. This does take practice. So, emphasize to these students that this is a brand new skill that they're trying. It's going to be very natural to feel a little awkward trying it at first, and they're going to have some failures, but they can practice this, and they will improve, and they'll find that they can do some good calligraphy. That's the letter B. Same start with the letter H, so we have a short diamond, long vertical, and we're going to come back and do our short diamond at the bottom. Then the long diamond, straight down, and another short diamond. So once again, the letter H starts with the short diamond, long vertical, short diamond, long diamond, then another short vertical, and a short diamond. So nice letter H. And then building on that is another uh, kind of unusual letter, <clears throat> and that's the letter K. So we'll start again the same way with a short diamond, long vertical down to the bottom, short diamond, and then we have a, an odd set of marks that's unique to the letter K. So we start down this way at about the middle, about the middle of this line, and we're going to come up at 45 degrees, do a short diamond, and then pull back at 45. So we have two thin lines that we're making at 45 degrees. Then we come back and do another short diamond, straight down, and another short diamond at the bottom. And that's the letter K. So once again, short diamond, long vertical, short diamond, and then we come up this way, along with the 45 degrees at the end of the pen, short diamond, down at 45 again, and then another short diamond directly under that first one. It's good that they be lined up. And then another short diamond. So the K is an unusual looking letter, but it's also a very smart looking letter. I like it. So we're going to do the letter F next, beginning with starting at just like the letter T, right up over the top line. So not under the line, like the short vertical, but slightly longer. We're going to come straight down, stop, do our short diamond at the bottom, and then another short diamond right at the top, like this. And then for the next mark, we need to break our rule of 45 degrees and rotate the pen so that it's sitting more shallowly. So we're going to rotate it around like this so it's something more like 30 degrees, and then we'll do our crossbar. It's a very short crossbar. We can bring it out just a little bit like that, but it's not going to go very far. So let's try that again, just right up over the top line, the vertical, short diamond, another short diamond, then a little vertical that way, or excuse me, horizontal. So now we're coming to a really fun letter, which is the letter P, and it's fun because it's just a little different. So we start out, this is another descending letter, so we'll start right on the top line with our short diamond, straight down, and then come down past the bottom line, 
stop, and then do another short diamond. Then we'll do a long diamond, pull down, and stop like this. Our next mark is the part that's different because it's a curved line. And this is a good place to stop and maybe practice some of these curved lines. So any of these spaces in between, you can begin to work with uh, creating these marks that look like little waves. And you maintain your 45 degree and just practice pulling your pen in this curved way. And we also can practice it the other way because that's useful too. So we start out down and up, down and up, rather than up and then down. So that's a good useful mark to learn to make. And to finish out the letter P, we start back here behind this first line and then up and down. So the P is a nice, fancy-looking, strong letter. We'll try that again with the short diamond. Straight down past the lower line, short diamond, long diamond, straight down and stop, and then come back. And there's your nice curved part of the letter P. Now there are a couple of other strange letters that we're not accustomed to. A few, these are a few uh, that are, don't fit quite with all the rules that we've done. So one is the letter X, which looks odd. It's not gonna look like our letter X. It starts out with a short diamond, our short vertical, and then another short diamond. And then here with a short 45 and another short 45 and the middle we're rotating our brush around so that it's quite flat and then just doing a crossbar this way. And that is the Gothic letter X. So we'll try it again. Short diamond, short vertical, short diamond, 45 degree, 45 degree mark, and then this flat cross member to make the letter X. The letter Z is very interesting. It starts out just above the line, and it's again a little shallower than our 45. So this is one that breaks the rules again. This is more like a 30 degree angle, so this line is a little flatter. We come down and then finish underneath the lower line, and then we cross it with another shallow mark. So the letter Z is uh, very different looking. You might try experimenting with different versions of it as well. Maybe rotating the pen and working under the line this way. I like that. Now it looks a little bit uh, short and squat and maybe that's why there's this other version. And so sometimes it took some experimentation to really find out what looks right to the eye, even if it doesn't fit all the rules. The last letter is the letter D. It's another strange letter that uses a different set of rules. And it takes practice because it's something you have to sort of eyeball. And so the letter D starts out like the letter O. We're going to start under the line, the short vertical, the long diamond. Now this next mark you have to sort of estimate, we're always pulling down at 45 degrees, but you have to come back this way and then pull down with a longer mark that we haven't used in any of our other letters and then do another sh uh, short vertical to meet down at the bottom. And that, believe it or not, is the letter D. So let's try that again. Short vertical, long diamond, longer diamond, and then bring that down to meet at the bottom. One more time. Short vertical, long diamond, long diamond, and then meet right at the bottom. Letter D. So I believe that is all of our lowercase letters. 
I'll be doing another video in addition to this one uh, about the uppercase letters. And uh, that's a good thing to follow on with once they get these lowercase all worked out. And this is usually at least a good class period or two, uh, you know, about 90 minutes. But you do whatever works for you and what works for your class. Uh, thank you. I hope this is helpful for you. And I will follow on with the uh, Capitals worksheet uh, next. Thank you.